here in the great city of St. Louis, Missouri, you are always welcome at the new Sunny Mount Missionary Baptist Church, where the Reverend Brandon A. Blake is our anointed teacher and pastor. As we pursue excellence in ministry, we will exalt His holy name, we will equip the saints, and we will evangelize the Word of God. You can expect a Christophany, a mighty move of God in this place. So welcome my brothers and sisters into the sanctuary of the new Sunny Mount Missionary Baptist Church, for God will move in this place. joining us on this Thanksgiving day as we celebrate uh, our Lord and Savior certainly we have so much to be thankful for but we're gonna start off this grand day of celebration with a Thanksgiving uh, litany we pray that you join us from wherever you are in celebrating uh, Jesus Christ life family friends on this Lord's day I began our litany goes, praise the Lord, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, his love endures forever. O oh Lord, our God, thank you for love so wonderful that we are not able to fully describe it with words, thoughts, or deeds. Thank you for creating love, for giving love, redeeming love, sustaining love, victorious love, and everlasting love. To him who divided the Red Sea asunder, his love endures forever, and brought Israel through the midst of it, his love endures forever. O oh Lord, our God, thank you for bringing us through many dangers, toils, and snares, through weary years and silent tears, through tragedies and triumphs, and through the various situations of grief and struggle by your enduring love. Give thanks to the Lord of Lords. His love endures forever. To him who alone does great wonders, his love endures forever. Give thanks to him who by his understanding made the heavens. His love endures forever. Spread out the earth upon the waters for his love endures forever. O oh Lord, our God, you are ruler over all that is. Thank you for life, light, air, water, breath, strength, and the hope we know because of your love. Thank you for revealing your love for us in creation. Give thanks to the one who remembers us in our lowest state. His love endures forever, freed us from our enemies. His love endures forever. And who gives food to every creature, his love endures forever. O oh Lord, our God, thank you for lifting us from low places, for feeding us from traps and bondage of every kind, and for providing for our needs and according to your wonderful love. Give thanks to the God of heaven, his love endures forever. Praise God. Happy Thanksgiving. Let's worship. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wherever you are, in your home, with your family, let's just put our hands together and let's turn your homes into a sanctuary. Hallelujah. And let's give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. On this Thanksgiving day, we bless the Lord because God is good and his mercy endures forever. Hallelujah. Let's give him thanks for all that he's done, all that he's doing, and all that he's going to do. Come on, put those hands together. Let's rejoice. Hallelujah. Psalms 100. All right. I'll be reading out of the New Living Translation, a very familiar passage of scripture, and it reads as follows. Shout with joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him singing with joy. Acknowledge that the Lord is God. He made us and we are his. We are his people, yes. the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Yes. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name, 
For the Lord yes. is good. Yes, Can yes. I say it again? For the Lord yes. is good. Hallelujah. Yes. Declare this in your home. For the Lord is good. <laughs> his unfailing love continues forever. And his faithfulness yes. continues to each generation. Hallelujah. Amen. The Lord bless the readers and the hearers and the doers of his holy word. Can we give the Lord some praise? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Good morning, church. Hallelujah. Can we bow in prayer? Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for another day. Another day that we have been able to rise up, oh God, with thanksgiving in our hearts, oh God. We thank you for being so good to us, oh God. Even through the pandemic and wars and all kind of tragedy all around, around us, you have still kept us in the bosom of your heart and your love, oh God. We thank you for being so good to us. You have been better to us than we could even be, be to ourselves. And for this, we are grateful, God. Lord, we thank you for sending your son Jesus to die on the cross and to rise up with all power in his hands, oh God. We declare victory right now, right now in the name of Jesus, oh God. Those that need healing, oh God, we ask that you go to the hospitals, go to the homes, oh God, and touch them with the finger of your love, oh God. We ask those that are, have bowed down head, that those that are bereaving, oh God, for the lost of loved ones, oh God, just comfort them. Send them your peace. Send them your love. And let them know that you will be with them always, oh God. We thank you for our church. We thank you for our pastor, oh God. We just thank you for all that you are doing for us here at New Sunny Mount Missionary Baptist Church. God, we come declaring glory and victory over all things, oh God. Whatever's going on, oh God, we know that we have the victory in Christ Jesus. Now, Lord, those that are traveling, those that are visiting families, give them traveling grace. Oh God, keep them safe from all hurt, harm, and danger. And God, we will forever give your name the glory and the praise. These and other blessings we ask in your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, let's just magnify the Lord and give him praise. Hallelujah. Wherever you are, glory to God. The Bible says that in everything, we're to give God thanks. Hallelujah. Because this is the will of God concerning you. And God has been good. And, and thanksgiving should just rise up out of your spirit. Hallelujah, because God has been good, and you ought to just want to lift your hands and bless his name. Hallelujah. If you're under the sound of my voice, yes. hallelujah, you're watching over the airways, right where you sit. Why don't yes. you just lift your hands to the Lord and just begin to bless him with a heart of thanksgiving. Yes. Hallelujah. Just bless the name of the Lord. Bless hallelujah. Name, Come on, just lift bless your voice and just tell him thank you. Thank hallelujah. You, just tell him thank, thank you. you hallelujah. Not because of thank what you you're God. doing, but what you've already done. Thank hallelujah. You, Hallelujah. Where you brought me from, we thank you. How you provided for us, hallelujah. We thank you. How you delivered us, we thank you. How you set us free, we thank you. We thank you for being a keeper, God, hallelujah. And with that, we lift our voice and say hallelujah. With our hands lifted up, hallelujah. With our hands. With our hands.
Hallelujah, hallelujah. That's it, come on, just worship him. Hallelujah. We bless your name, we bless your name. Our heart is filled with praise, with the heart of thanksgiving. Hallelujah, with the heart of thanksgiving. Yeah. With the heart of thanksgiving. Hallelujah. With the heart of thanksgiving. Hallelujah. I will bless, I will bless the oh Lord. Hallelujah. Come on and bless his name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Bless the name of the Lord. Glory to your name, God. Thank you, Father. I pray your heart is filled with thanksgiving that you are blessing the Lord with such, such a heart, a heart filled with thanksgiving. Again, we say uh, happy or blessed uh, thanksgiving to you, to your family, to your loved ones. It is our prayer that you are enjoying time together. Um, I know I'm not alone, but as I think about my life, uh, I have so much to be thankful for, and I know you have so much to be thankful for. And we know uh, that the gifts and the blessings that we enjoy is all due to the faithfulness of God. So we're grateful to God for the things which we are thankful for. I pray that you're having a safe uh, season. Again, we're grateful that the Lord has brought us to this place. I was sharing earlier that the holidays came quick. Amen, holidays came quick. Uh, but we're grateful uh, to be here to celebrate them. And if you can't think of anything uh, to give God thanks, uh, just thank the Lord that you made it, amen, that you made it uh, to celebrate this day. This month, it has been my uh, prayerful aim uh, to talk around our uh, mental, emotional, and our spiritual health. Even on this day of Thanksgiving, uh, I'm going to continue in that particular vein. I want to look at a passage of scripture uh, that is somewhat uh, familiar to us all, maybe not in its entirety, but certainly there are a few passages uh, that we often refer to as, as we face uh, some difficulties in life. It's in Psalm 30, Psalm 30, uh, the book of Psalm 30. You will find these words, and I'm using the uh, English Standard Version translation on today. It says, I will exalt you, O Lord, for you have drawn me up and have not let my foes rejoice over me. O Lord, my God, I cry to you for help, and you have healed me. O Lord, you have brought up my soul from Sheol. You restored me to life from among those who go down to the pit. Sing praises to the Lord, O you his saints, and give thanks to his holy name. For his anger is but for a moment, and his favor is for a lifetime. Weeping may endure for the night, but joy comes with the morning. As for me, I have said in my prosperity, I shall never be moved. By your favor, O Lord, you made my mountain stand strong. You hid your face. I was dismayed. To you, O Lord, I cry, and to the Lord I plead for mercy. What profit is there in my death? If I go down to the pit, will the dust praise you? 
Will it tell you of your faithfulness? Hear, O Lord, and be merciful to me. O Lord, be my helper. You have turned for me my mourning into dancing. You have loosed my sackcloth and clothed me with gladness. That my glory may sing your praise and not be silent. O Lord, my God, I will give thanks to you forever. Let's pray. Lord God, we thank you for your word. We thank you for this day of thanksgiving. We thank you, God, for the food and the fellowship, the fun that we will enjoy. And we thank you, God, that we take these moments on this holiday to tell you thank you for not just life here, but for eternal life. For Jesus, for the Holy Spirit, we say thank you. God, touch our hearts and our minds as we go into your word on the day. I pray, God, that you uh, produce fruit from this time together. As many face uh, the grief of this particular season, I pray, God, that you impart to us by your Holy Spirit uh, that we can have joy even in this season. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Again, I have so much to be thankful for, um, to include certainly family and friends in this season, um, and also uh, our church, um, the number of committed uh, followers of the Lord who share here at New Sunday Mount Church, those who serve us in so many uh, capacities. Again, we have just so much to be thankful for. This grief at Thanksgiving. This grief at Thanksgiving. The book of Psalms is traditionally known as the Psalter. The Psalter. It is the original hymn book of the church. The Psalms, they serve as a model for us as to how to pray and praise in the midst of whatever circumstance we may face in life. Jesus was familiar with this hymn book. We see him quoting the Psalms even at Calvary. He quotes the Psalm at Calvary, Psalms 22, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? He quotes the Psalm at Calvary, Psalms 31, into your hands I commit my spirit. The Psalms, the Psalter, they come in various genres and they have various themes. Today we're looking at an interesting Psalm of Thanksgiving. The Thanksgiving or the Psalms comes as Thanksgiving songs, uh, Psalms, liturgical Psalms, enthronement or royalty Psalms, and lament Psalms. One might suggest that the Thanksgiving Psalms serves as an alternative to Psalms of lament. But it seems in Psalms 30 or Psalm 30, David has interestingly wed his personal grief with thanksgiving. Certainly in this particular psalm, the thanksgiving overshadows the grief in the text, but one cannot ignore the deep despair that David describes of himself. There is so much that we do know, do not know about the context of this passage. We know that David is the author and we know that it is meant for the dedication of either his personal house, the king's palace, or the Lord's house. Both are plausible. We know David built a beautiful palace that highlighted his prosperity and the prosperity of the nation. And while David was not alive at the completion of God's house, he was very much instrumental in obtaining the materials needed to build the temple for the Lord. 
Therefore, he could have certainly written this particular psalm uh, to be saved for the dedication of the Lord's house. However, we do not know if this is a singular event in the life of David or if this represents just multiple circumstances or matters that David will face that draws him to this prayer and praise. Yet, there are some obvious things from the text that stand out. We know that David is sick. We know that David was sick. <laughs> and, and as, you know, us country folk would say, he was low sick, amen, he was low sick. Not high sick, he was low sick. We know that David had sin, that pride had overcome him. We know that David has called on the saints to help him to praise God. And we also know that David, in the midst of this, gives thanks to his Savior who rescues him. My brothers and sisters, I think as we celebrate Thanksgiving on today, certainly, we all have something to be thankful for. Now, there are times in our lives, like David, we may face obstacles in our lives and, and we may be struggling spiritually and personally. Uh, and like David, we may need to call on other people to help us to pray and praise God in the midst of what we're going through. And all of us can testify prayerfully that regardless of the state in which we are in, we can give thanks to our Savior for rescuing us. I want to point out just three things of which we can give thanks for in light of this particular passage on today. Here's the first. I think David teaches, and teaches us in this passage to first, give thanks because God lifts us from the pit. Give thanks because God lifts us from the pit. Notice the text. David says, I will exalt you, O Lord, for you have drawn me up. You have not allowed my enemies or my foes to rejoice over me. That's verse 1. And then in verses 2 and in verse 3, he begins to explain that he was sick, low sick. And he needed to be healed. And he cried out, the text says, to the Lord. And the Lord, as it would be, drew him from the pit of sickness. He was so sick uh, it was like he had one foot in the grave. Notice how he describes it. He pulls my soul from Sheol. And he says, as, as a result of that, he would praise the Lord. I will lift you because you have lifted me. I wonder, is there anybody who can testify, God, I will lift you because as I look back over my life, you have lifted me. The image is of one who goes to a deep well with a bucket in order to draw water from it. This is how David paints the picture of the image of being drawn or pulled from his pit of sickness. David describes his sickness as being so life-threatening that God is pulling his soul from Sheol. Now, Sheol, in essence, is this holding place believed in the Old Testament. It is this in-between place, in-between life and death or death and life. David, therefore, again, recounts a moment where he was so sick that his sickness felt like he was dying. And it results in this hopelessness. He describes it as a, a pit. God brought my soul from a pit and restored my life. He uses this word pit to suggest 
that it was dark and an isolated place, meaning it was lonely. Now, because he is the king, there are always people around him, and especially during a time when the king is sick. Yet and still, he describes his experience thusly, isolated, dark, and alone. In essence, brothers and sisters, we're peering into his life. He is so sick that now his sickness weighs upon his emotional state. He's hopeless. He doesn't believe he can make it through. He is hopeless. He's hopeless. He's surrounded by folk and yet alone. He's facing the darkness and the dreariness of his pit alone. And I'm sure many can connect with such a view be it sickness or some other pit in your life where you were at a low state, at a low mood, and you felt isolated. Things that made you laugh before, they aren't funny at the particular moment. You're at a low state, low mood, a low time, missing loved ones, estranged from family and friends because of regulations. It's a, it's a low, it's a low state. David is there. David sympathizes and empathizes with us as we experience such. And remember, the point of the psalm is to serve as a model for us as to how to pray and praise God as we face similar circumstances. As I was thinking about this, I was reminded of uh, one of my coworkers. Uh, we shared an office, and I could always tell when she was in a low mood because I would walk in the office in the middle of July and she's playing Christmas music because Christmas music for her had a way of lifting her soul. But, but what do you do when Jingle Bell Batman Smells doesn't work? What, 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 what do you do when, when, when the normal Christmas uh, music that sometimes lift us doesn't seem to be lifting us in the moment? David answers that question for us in the text. David says, when he got to that low state, he says, I cried out to the Lord. He says, I prayed. I, I cried out to the Lord. And notice what the Lord does. He, he, he shows it to us strategically. He says, the Lord helped me. The Lord healed me. The Lord lifted me. And the Lord restored me. There's someone today on this Thanksgiving day who needs the help of the Lord, who desires the healing of the Lord, who needs the Lord to lift you from that low place and to restore you. Notice a little bit more carefully what David is implying. He says, the Lord healed me or helped me first, helped me. What does this mean? Well, it means he had gotten to a place where he could not bear his burden or his situation alone. He needed help. Help. We all need help. Some point or place in our lives, we all need the Lord or another to help us bear the low state, to, to help us to bear, to bear our pit. Not just help, but he says, I also trusted the Lord to heal me. The text says he was low sick. Therefore, uh, the Lord, in healing him, provided the cure or the solution for his ailment or condition. My brothers and sisters, God oftentimes provides through other people that God uses as God's instruments uh, for God's divine plan. In healing David, it means he also gives him strength. And we need the Lord's strength. We need the Lord to help us and to heal us and to, to give us strength 
to face the day and to face the realities of our tomorrows. We need strength. Thirdly, he says the Lord lifted him, lifted him from the pit. Well, I told you the pit highlights this lonely, isolated place, this darkness that he's experiencing in his own life, and it is the Lord who lifts him. Therefore, lifting here suggests that the Lord restored to him his joy. And my brothers and sisters, uh, this joy that the Lord restores, this joy that the Lord restores for him, uh, uh, it transforms the darkness of his depressed moments in light of the hopelessness of his sickness, and, and it gives him, gives him joy, joy, joy. And finally, it says it restores him. It restores him. I've had the opportunity to visit a number of persons as they are experiencing sickness, and I see these particular stages. When one is sick, particularly low sick, there is, again, this isolation and this distance from others, and that sickness sometimes causes us to lose weight or we, we change in our being and in changing in our being uh, psychologically something happens to us psychologically something happens to us and whether it is internal or based upon how others look at us there is a loss of self-esteem so David says God was even concerned about that and he restored me so here he means he restores me to this prominent status that I had prior to my sickness he even describes to us why he even describes why. Notice his, his prayer. He says, he, he did not want the Lord to allow his enemies and his foes to rejoice over his death or defeat. You see, for David, for the entirety of his kingship, he would have to deal with those who were loyal to Saul who did not want David to succeed. So God allowed David to emerge from his condition by allowing him to recover from his sickness. And as a result, David, he bursts out in praise. Let me tell you something before I move to my next point. I'm so glad that God won't allow the enemy to have the last laugh. I, I, I'm so glad. I, I'm so glad that, that God won't allow your enemy to have the last laugh. Whoever your enemy is or whatever your enemy is, if it is somebody, they won't have the last laugh. Or if it is some things, neither will it have the last laugh. Depression will not have the last laugh. Despair will not have the last laugh. Divorce will not have the last laugh. Disdain, despair, oppression will not have the last laugh. Therefore, we can give thanks because God pulls us. He draws us from our pit. Here's the second thing the text is telling to teach us. Give thanks because God's anger lasts for a moment, but his favor lasts for a lifetime. <laughs> I, when, I, when I read that again, I, I just had to give God thanks that, that God's anger, it only lasts, David says, for a moment, but his favor lasts for a lifetime. Most people do not read Psalms 30 as a thanksgiving psalm. Because the many references to the pit, to mourning, to sackcloth, but also because of verse 6 and 7, when David admits his sin. Notice what he says. As for me, I said in my prosperity, I shall never be moved. By your favor, O Lord, you have made my mountain stand strong. You hid your face and I was dismayed. David is saying, Brandon Blake translation, I got beside myself. My confidence in God became self-confidence. 
My humility in God became pride and arrogance. My God dependency became self-dependency. What I used to give thanks to God for, now I'm giving myself the credit. I became careless and carefree. And one day I looked up and God was gone. He forgot to give thanks on Thanksgiving Day and he looked up and God was gone. He forgot to say ta-ta and he looked up and God was gone. He failed to give credit and honor where it was due and he looked up and God had hidden God's face from him. Meaning God had removed his favor and th therefore stricken his body with sickness. Derek Kinder, he suggests that he gives him this redemptive abandonment. What makes this abandonment is God expects that when God is missing in the life of the believer, that we will be able or so in tune with the presence of the Spirit of God that when the Spirit of God is no longer with us, that we recognize it. God wants us to be so connected and aligned with the Lord that when the Lord is no longer there, we notice that something is missing in our lives. We, we notice that, that something is different. We notice that something is out of balance, that something is off track. We, we should be so in tune with God that when God's face is not shining on us, we know something is wrong. Something, therefore, then prompts us to adjust. But when we don't, God has a way, is there a witness here, of getting our attention. And for David, it was making him sick, low sick. And I, I know theologically some of you are going to struggle with it. I, I get it and, and right now because I don't have the time I'm just going to suggest just keep walking with the Lord. Uh, such a reality even shows up in the New Testament. You remember in uh, Corinthians, the Corinthian church instead of communion being uh, a sacred moment they had made communion a party. And rich folk would bring so much wine and so much bread. And if you were rich, you were able to eat and, and enjoy. But if you were poor, you were unable uh, to participate in communion because you didn't bring anything to, to the potluck. So Paul writes to the church and says, wait, wait, wait. You better quit playing with the Lord. Because of how you have treated communion. Therefore, some of you are sick and others have even died. So this idea even shows up in the New Testament. David, who has become so prideful, has now been stricken of God. And it is God behind the pit. Do I have a witness here? And not his enemy. It's God. Now it was after this that David rises from his pit with a different theological resolve. And that resolve says this, God's anger lasts but for a moment, but his favor is for a lifetime. Weeping may endure for a night, but anybody here know joy will come in the morning. There's a whole lot of theology in this passage that I don't have the time that I like to kind of really wrestle with it on the day. But let me look at it from a, a broad, broad standpoint to bring together some of that which David wants un, us to understand. Here's what David is trying to teach us. God's love is not absent God's anger. God's love is not absent God's discipline. 1 John 4, 8, God is love, absolutely. But understand that when John writes God is love, John also has in mind 
that he's talking about the same God that caused the flood in Noah's day. He's talking about the same God who allowed 400 years of captivity. He's talking about the same God who allowed 70 years of captivity in Babylon. He's talking about the same God who promised to bless us when we obey him and curse us when we disobey him. He's talking about the same God who is long-suffering but also says he never allows the guilty to go unpunished. He's talking about the same God in Psalm 66 who says, I am terrible. Now maybe this is difficult for some of us to grasp because we don't like to think about God's love from this perspective that God's love disciplines us and God gets angry with us. Well, just think about any parent who has to rear stubborn children. Amen, somebody. And you will understand exactly that sometimes it takes various means to get one's attention. And I can testify I knew my parents loved me. I really did. I knew my parents loved me, but it took me some time, amen, to understand that love also meant discipline. I pray my children watching, amen. I pray my children watching. But he comes to the conclusion that, that God's love is inclusive of all of these things, yet his anger only lasts a little while. 2 Corinthians 4, 17 says, For his light momentary affliction is uh, preparing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison. The light momentary affliction that we have is getting us ready for the eternal blessings and weight of the Lord's glory that does not compare to anything we experience here on earth. Jesus even mentions this. The Gospel of John, chapter 16, Jesus says, Truly, truly, I say to you, you will weep and lament, but the world will rejoice. You will be sorrowful, but your sorrow will turn into joy. When a woman is giving birth, Jesus says, she has sorrow because her hour has come. But when she delivered the baby, she no longer remains, uh, re remembers the anguish for the joy that a human being has been born into the world. So also you have sorrow now, but I will see you again and your hearts will rejoice and no one will take your joy from you. David says not only does his anger only last a moment, he goes on to say his favor is for life. Hallelujah. His favor is, is for life. And he says a quote that we often share when someone is experiencing grief. David says, weeping endures for night. Or weeping this is where the text caught me, Karen, uh, as I was studying it recently. Notice the text in various translations. The, the text doesn't say weeping endures for a night, but joy comes in the morning. The, the text actually reads weeping may endure for a night may end and, and I like that we think may end David what do you have by, by inserting that little word may it may end or I get it may means possibility but, but David what do you have in mind when you say we think may endure for a night and the Holy Spirit spoke to me and the Holy Spirit says the more you walk with the Lord the shorter the night becomes I have a witness here because early in life when we experience the weeping uh, of the night 
It endures or it lasts for us a long time, but after we've had experience after experience after experience after experience and the Lord delivers us and delivers us and delivers us and deliver us, we get to some nights and we don't weep. Do I have a witness here? Because we know the Lord who delivered us before will deliver us again. So David is at a point in time where he can say weeping may endure for a night. Notice what he says about joy though. Joy comes in the morning may represents possibility, but he says joy comes in the morning, which is a definite statement, a definitive statement. There's a possibility that you have to endure the weeping for the night, but David is saying, I can guarantee when morning comes, joy will come. Somebody listening to me on the day, I want to encourage you on Thanksgiving Day. You may be experiencing the weeping on this particular day, but hang on in there till the morning because joy might not come, but joy will come. Notice what he does again. He prays. I'm almost done. He, he prays for mercy. God seeks true worshipers regardless of the circumstance. Notice what he does. He tugs on the heart of God by saying, God, what, what do you gain if I die? He tugs on the heart of God by saying, God, the dust can't praise. Now, maybe David didn't, well, David did not know Jesus would walk into uh, Jerusalem and tell the people, hey, y'all keep on praising because uh, the rocks will cry out. D D David says, David says that the dust won't praise you like I can. D D David, he, he talks on the heart of God by saying, God, God, who's going to tell the world about how faithful you are? Why does God seek such worshipers? Here's the answer. Because God desires to be glorified in all circumstances. God desires to be first in all circumstances. God desires that we glorify him when we're up and glorify him when we're down. God desires that, that whatever we face, we give him praise. And that's why on the day it is so important for us to revisit this Thanksgiving song because we don't simply need the Thanksgiving psalm when we are on the mountain. We need the thanksgiving psalms when we are also in the pits. You see, we can naturally give thanks when we're on the mountain. But there are times when we are facing the pits of our lives, when we have to muster up a reason to give God thanks. So I have a witness here. Therefore, he has left it on record that God is able to turn our mourning into rejoicing. I'm done because that's my final point. Give thanks. Not only because the Lord draws us out of the pit, give thanks. Not only because his favor or his anger lasts but a moment uh, and his favor a lifetime, but give thanks thirdly and finally because he turns our mourning into dancing. He turns our mourning into dancing. Some of your Bibles read uh, wailing. I like both translations. Wailing, and some suggest uh, mourning. Wailing. Wailing, I think, is the picture of David, who is in so much pain and agony that he's groaning from the pain in the pit. And then mourning. And not just mourning, notice the word sackcloth, which means death is in the vicinity. But God took it all and restores him. What does David commit to do? He commits to give God thanks forever. You see it? He says, I will give the Lord thanks forever. Again, happy Thanksgiving. We have so much to be thankful for. But today, is there anyone who can thank God because he turns our mourning into dancing? 
can thank God because he turns our wailing into worship, can thank God because he turns my funeral clothes into garments of celebration, can thank God because he takes my grief and gives me gladness, can thank God because he turns my sorrow into joy, can thank God because he takes my hopelessness and gives me hope, can thank God because he takes my misery and gives me a new mission, can thank God because he turns my pain into praise. There's an old gospel song that says, there's so much that the Lord has done for me. When I was a sinner, he set me free. All of my birds, he helped me to bear. All of my sorrows, he helped me to share. I can't pay the Lord, but I can tell him, Lord, thank you, sir. Let's pray. Lord, for every mountain you brought me over, for every trial you've seen us through, for every blessing, hallelujah. And for this, we give you praise. God, in the name of Jesus, we're grateful on this Thanksgiving day for who you are, for you walking with us and talking with us and, and guiding us. God, for those who may be experiencing moments of momentary grief, help us to know that your anger only lasts but a moment, but your favor a lifetime. That weeping endures, may endure for a night. But joy comes in the morning that you turn our mourning and wailing into dancing. And for this, we give you thanks. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because He has given Jesus Christ His Son. Give thanks with a grateful heart. We praise God on this Thanksgiving day. Certainly it is our prayer that you are connected with the family of God where you can grow in the grace, the knowledge, the wisdom of God, where you can serve and be a part of a ministry. So we invite you. Uh, if you're watching and you wanna join this community of faith, there's ways in which you can do so that we've placed here on the screen. We ask that you join us, but it is our prayerful concern for you that you are connected with a body of Christ where you can grow. Again, we pray you have a wonderful day on today. 
Um, don't eat too much turkey. Amen. Amen. Don't eat too much turkey. But I pray you have a joyful day. May the Lord watch over you. May the Lord be kind to you. May the Lord bless you so much with the Lord's favor. No, we praise God for you. Pray for us. We're praying for you. Peace. Tragedies are commonplace All kinds of diseases People are slipping away Economies down People can't get enough pay But as for me Oh Walk to your house and declare this with us. Folks without homes, living out in the streets, and the drug habits some say they just can't be. Yeah, muggers and robbers.